please ensure that your debate open and call upon the first affirmative speaker for two to break away. Good evening, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate is that pepper spray in South Australia should no longer be a prohibited substance. We define pepper spray as an aerosol containing oils from pepper, which is irritant to the eyes and respiratory system, and used as a defence weapon. We define no longer a prohibited substance as it to no longer be forbidden or banned from the public. We, the affirmative team, strongly believe this statement to be true. Today, as first speaker, I'll be speaking about why we, the general public, need means of self-defence in our daily lives and how pepper spray is best suited for this. Our second speaker will discuss how pepper spray should no longer be prohibited, instead monitored as it is in Western Australia. She will also highlight how citizens would feel more at ease having a quick and easy defence mechanism in their daily lives. Our third speaker will then rebut and further sum up our team case. Now to my point that pepper spray in South Australia should no longer be a prohibited substance as we need a form of self-defence and pepper spray is our best non-violent option. In this country, Australians withhold the legal right of self-defence, <coughs> yet we don't have the practical ability to exercise that right, seeing as possessing any object specifically designed for the purpose of self-defence, such as pepper spray, is seen as a criminal offence. Prohibited self-defence items in South Australia include pepper sprays, maces, clubs and personal tasers. Now, a mace is a blunt weapon which is reinforced with metal or stone and was designed to deliver powerful blows. Similarly, a club is a thick wooden weapon used to hit something and a personal taser delivers an electric current causing involuntary convulsion of the muscles. As you can probably tell, these weapons can cause lasting and permanent damage including bruising of tissue and muscle and the breaking of bones. And pepper spray? It causes inflamed eyes and airways with effects lasting 20 to 90 minutes. 20 to 90 minutes of a mildly inflamed res respiratory system in order to escape potential rape, abuse or even murder is nothing compared to a broken leg. Yet pepper spray is still prohibited in South Australia. An article in the Daily Telegraph stresses that we need some form of self-defence before we essentially become a nation of defenceless victims and it even states that there are women who would have been liable to prosecution had they been carrying anything that might have saved them. This is supported by a statement from the Girls in GIS Association that states that women are not being equipped with the substantial means of self-defence. A survey by journalist David Lahan showed that majority of Australians' women and elderly do not believe that relying on the police to arrive in time will keep them safe and wish to possess some form of non-lethal self-defence such as pepper spray. This leads me to now point out the key features of pepper spray which make it the most suitable defence mechanism for our intended purposes. Pepper spray comes in a small aerosol can which can be easily stored in a handbag, wallet or on your belt and reached easily at any time. Street Directory stated that the main advantages of pepper spray are that it is easy to use and can disable the attacker quickly and effectively in a non-lethal way. It further explained that the fear and possible consequences of permanently hurting someone are simply no longer there as pepper spray is not a lethal option. Moreover, pepper spray is the most effective means of self-defence because even if the spray does not come directly in line with the attacker, the mist effect causes a wall to be formed, allowing time for the attacker to get away unharmed. Additionally, oh sorry, the victim to get away unharmed. Additionally, pepper spray can be used against a large number of attackers as one sweeping spray can affect several people at once without having any effect on the sprayer. Possibly the key feature of pepper spray is that it is much safer than any other defence weapon as it has a better chance of stopping the attacker without causing a lethal wound. Pepper sprays also have a safety flip top or sliding mechanism to ensure they do not accidentally react unintentionally. Clearly, pepper spray is the most efficient and effective form of self-defence and is much needed in order to fulfil our needs for a self-defence method. 
So, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, pepper spray in South Australia should most definitely not be a prohibited substance any longer. Again, I would like to reiterate that all Australians have the lawful right to self-defence, yet no practical ability to do so. Pepper spray is obviously the best option because it is easy to use and can quickly disarm the attacker with a non-lethal inflammation of the eyes and throat. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for our debate tonight is that pepper spray in South Australia should no longer be a prohibited substance. We, the negative team, believe this statement to be false. We agree with the definition made by the affirmative team. Today, as first speaker, I'll be talking to you about the dangers of civilians and people of all kinds having access to pepper spray. I will, be also, I will also be informing you of the lethal effects of pepper spray, which varies for each individu individual. Our second speaker, Charlotte, will be talking about how the idea of using pepper spray for self-defense creates a much bigger problem as well as the dangers of normalising a weapon and how the results are reflected in the rest of the world. Our third speaker, Abby, will rebut and sum up our team case. Before I move on to my points, I would like to address the flaws in the opposition, opposition's debate. The first speaker has tried to tell you that the effects of pepper spray are not as harmful as weapons such as mace. However, we do not know how someone could react to it as it varies from person to person. As I'll be talking about in my speech, serious injuries and even death are very possible consequences. The first speaker has also tried to tell you that pepper spray is non-lethal and is an easy to use means of protection. However, you also never know the reaction you're going to get as men can fight through a lot of pain when their testosterone is flowing and drug addicts may not, may not even be aware you sprayed them. If also, if pepper spray isn't lethal, then why all the injuries and deaths? Even one death is enough as it proves it's lethal. Now on to my points. My first point is that civilians and people of all kinds having access to pepper spray is far too dangerous. If pepper spray were no longer a prohibited substance, it would mean that everyone and anyone could have access to it which would create a very high probability of it falling into the wrong hands and being used for the wrong reasons. This is incredibly dangerous as pepper spray has a number of detrimental effects and painful symptoms which I will be elabor elaborating on later in my speech. There are a number of scenarios where people, pepper spray has been used for the wrong reasons. This year, a police reported that in Germany, a man was so upset with his haircut that he attacked his hairdresser with pepper spray. While last year in America, a woman sprayed her pepper spray at someone who had stolen her parking space. There are too many stressful factors in our day-to-day -day lives that could trigger the misuse of pepper spray and cause serious harm to others. Along with intentional misuse, there have been several accidents where people use pepper spray in the right situation but were faced with the wrong outcome. 
The most severe was when American police squirted pepper spray onto an abusive husband being taken into custody. At first, there was little to no effect, but within an hour, he was discovered comatose in his cell and then pronounced dead a short time later. Besides, you never know whose hands or pepper spray could get into. Just think what a small innocent child would do if they had possession of pepper spray after finding it in the house, thinking it is a toy and then proceeding to play with it. This is the same for a criminal who no doubt would easily take down their victim with this dangerous weapon. Keeping the spray prohibited ensures no one has the option to carry and use the weapon, as well as making it harder for them to get access to it. My second point is that pepper spray can cause serious pain and damage, and in some cases, death. After being sprayed, some symptoms the victim can experience include intense eye pain, temporary blindness, severe stinging in the eyes, asthma, chest pain, difficulty breathing and possibly loss of consciousness. Additionally, you never know how someone could react to pepper spray. For the unlucky ones with an allergy or major reaction to it, it can be deadly. It shuts down the lungs, which shuts down the rest of the body for lack of oxygen. Without immediate medical attention, it doesn't take long for the recipient to die. One question we also have to ask ourselves is how is it fair or ethical for police to use pepper spray on all criminals when, in, when it is unknown how everyone will react to it, as some will get affected much worse with temporary blindness and death as a possibility. Police are trained to act on instinct, and with a weapon as powerful as pepper spray, who knows what could happen? This is the reason why pepper spray is currently prohibited. Death is a very possible consequence. In a study conducted by Dr. Rohini Ha, a researcher from the University of California, it was identified that from 1990 to 2015, pepper spray caused 5,131 people to have injuries, with two people who died and 70 who suffered permanent disabilities. So, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, we, the negative team, believe that pepper spray in South Australia should stay as a prohibited substance. The dangers of civilians and people of all kinds having access to such a harmful weapon outweigh the few, if any, positive benefits. Thank you. Second affirmative speaker, Stella Clark. Good evening, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate is that pepper spray in South Australia should no longer be a prohibited substance. As the affirmative team, we agree with this statement and strongly believe that there is no reason for pepper, sp pepper spray to be banned in our state. Our first speaker has already informed you about self-defence and why pepper spray is the best option for our needs. She also stated that South Australians have the right to protection and pepper spray is a very effective tool for this. 
Today, as second speaker, I will argue that this protective device should no longer be prohibited, but rather monitored like it is in Western Australia. I will also discuss how pepper spray makes citizens feel at ease and like they have the option to easily protect themselves. Before I begin my debate, I would like to point out some obvious flaws in the opposition's argument. The first speaker has tried to tell you that everybody having access to pepper spray would be dangerous. Like I will discuss in my debate, pepper spray does not need to be made available to everyone. This is the case for Western Australia. Pepper spray can be monitored. WA is ultimately safer and not dangerous like the first negative speaker has tried to tell you. Um, the first negative speaker has tried to tell you that pepper spray is in fact lethal and there have been numerous deaths and injuries in injuries um, regarding pepper spray. <coughs> However, we would like to point out that pepper spray has only killed 1% of people over time because they were allergic. Furthermore, more people have died being tangled in their bed sheets, 800 per year, than by killed by pepper spray. Now I'm going to discuss my first point, that pepper spray should be monitored rather than prohibited. According to ABC News, all Australian states, except Western Australia, consider pepper spray to be a dangerous weapon that cannot be used for self-defence purposes. In Western Australia, pepper spray is a controlled weapon. In other words, the state allows its citizens to use pepper spray along with swords and spear guns if they have a lawful excuse. This excuse can be anything from martial arts practices or self-defence. WA states that, is, that it is a lawful excuse if it is carried or possessed by a person for the purpose of being used in lawful defence in circumstances that the person has reasonable grounds to apprehend. Lorraine Finlay, a lecturer at the Murdoch University School of Law in Perth, has stated that reasonable, reasonable grounds can mean if you are a woman walking alone at night, you may well have reasonable grounds for carrying pepper spray. Western Australia also states that elderly people and other vulnerable categories can use pepper spray for self-defence. This shows the benefits of having it as a monitor device rather than a prohibited one. In addition to this, pepper spray um, has different potency indicators, meaning there are different strengths and severities, depending on the concentration of pepper oil in the can. According to research from Sabre Red, Police officers use pepper spray with a concentration of 18%, which is highly dangerous. However, in Western Australia, pepper spray can be purchased with a concentration as low as 6%, which has a less harmful impact and is more temporary. So the fact that pepper spray can be purchased at lower concentrations means that there is no reason for it to be prohibited. Rather than prohibiting pepper spray in South Australia, we can be monitoring it by making it available in lower concentrations, much like Western Australia. This brings me to my second point, that pepper spray should be legalised in South Australia because it makes people feel at ease and like they are always protected. South Australians, women in particular, deserve to feel safe. Fatalities where women have been murdered on their walks home have increased over the past year or so. For example, there was the murder of the 17-year-old schoolgirl in Sydney and the murder of Eurydice Dixon, who was killed on her walk home on June 12th this year. These deaths prove that women need to be able to protect themselves wherever they go. It is also important that people feel safe. Pepper spray is a simple device that can be quickly used to save someone's life. Stacey Lee, the reporter for Sky News Adelaide, stated that she would like to have pepper spray in her possession after a man attacked her early one morning. Luckily, with the help of another woman, she left uninjured, but admitted that she was traumatised from the experience. She says that if she had pepper spray in her possession, she would have felt more confident that she could save herself, because you might not always have someone there to help you. Stacey Lee's experience further proves that pepper spray should be legalised in South Australia. So, Ladies and gentlemen, the fact that pepper spray saves lives shows that it should not be prohibited but rather monitored. In addition to this, it makes citizens feel at ease and like they can quickly defend themselves against a fatal attack. This is why pepper spray should no longer be prohibited in South Australia. Thank you.
the sake of negative speaker, Charlotte Levy. Good evening, Chairperson, Adjudicator, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, I will be speaking to you about how the idea that pepper spray is a useful weapon for self-defence only creates a much more serious, lasting problem about rape culture, and how as a self-defence mechanism, it is often frighteningly ineffective. I will also be speaking to you about the dangers of normalising a weapon, such as pepper spray, and how the results of normalising weapons are already being reflected in the rest of the world, particularly in the United States. However, before I explain my points, I would like to point out the flaws in the opposition's arguments. The opposition stated that pepper spray would give women the ability to feel at ease and protected while they are walking down the streets. However, this is not the ability to feel at ease. This is just knowing that you can defend yourself and will not prevent any more attacks from happening. It will only solve violence with violence, as I will further continue in my speech. To feel at ease and safe is knowing that there is nothing that can hurt you. Providing women with pepper spray will not give them this knowledge. They also stated that it should be allowed under lawful excuse and closely monitored. However, there is no way to determine the use for each individual person. They said that on the grounds that a person is a woman or an elderly person, they should be allowed to carry pepper spray with them. But this discriminates a whole other group of people. People such as men who are also victims of rape and dis disabled people that haven't made the, met the requirements won't be given pepper spray. My first point is that using pepper spray for self-defence is a short-term answer to a long-term problem. One of the main reasons people pushed for the legalisation of this substance, mace and tasers, is that generally it is a useful weapon for women to use against a male rapist. However, as debated in Parliament this year, that would only encourage the problem with more violence, the answer to which isn't violence. To begin with, the legalisation of pepper spray is in compliance with the Customs Prohibited Imports Regulations of 1956, which is the principal regulations of all prohibited goods. This Act controls the importation of prohibited items and only makes exceptions when licences, reasons and government meet the requirements. On 28th of June 2018, the Senate House debated this very issue, and they came to the conclusion that access to a means of self-protection by women in particular would not change anything long term, and will not provide women with a sense of security that they will not become just another assault, rape or murder statistic, thus showing its uselessness as a self-defence weapon. Our government should not be changing acts and laws to make one thing legal that can't help us anyway. In order to make pepper spray legal, this requires the amendment of multiple acts and regulations in the Constitution, including the Customs Prohibited Imports Regulations of 1956, the Customs Act, and the government has to make sure that these amendments, in turn, meet the requirements of the Legislative Instruments Act of 2003. This requires so many changes to be made to the legislation of rules of these acts, which is very time-consuming, but over time will do nothing to repudiate rape culture. In order to make society safer from rape culture, harassment and assaults, both sexual and non-sexual, introducing new weapons to combat this will only add to the problem. Combating violence with violence only invites more violence, creating a cycle as this is not only a self-defence weapon, but there is nothing preventing it from being used as an assault weapon also. Pepper spray is simply ignoring the root problem, and if we really want to fix these long-term issues, it's not the answer as temporary solutions in government cause the problem to be treated as a matter of less urgency. Arming women in order to fix this will only turn a blind eye to the dismissive nature we display towards rape culture, which is the real issue. Making this pepper spray legal for uses of self-defence is, as Senator Janet Rice said, just another man in power telling us that we are responsible for violence against us. This motion puts the onus on women to go to extreme lengths to ensure our safety, when the priority must be to eradicate men's violence. That's where the problem is. That's where the responsibility lies. And that's where government interventions need to be focused. Instead of promoting a tolerance to rape culture, the government should be looking at how to minimise it, not what to do when a vulnerable person is confronted with an attacker. It's all about prevention, not remedy. My second point is that making pepper spray legal will normalise it, and normalising pepper spray will have a negative effect on our lives, as well as supporting misogynistic organisations. Pepper spray is a classified weapon, just as a knife or gun, but generally people are not allowed to carry knives or guns on their keychains and concealed in their pockets as has been popularised in Western Australia and the United States. Our first speaker has already spoken about the detrimental effects of human health caused by pepper spray, so normalising this weapon will only put people at a higher risk of being affected in this way. They are dangerous weapons, capable of severely harming or killing people. In the United States, guns are legal and have been normalised, and look at the results of this. It is normal to see firearms in Walmarts, and there are constant mass shootings. Whilst pepper spray doesn't have bullets, it is still dangerous, hence why it is classified as a weapon. And, as we have seen in the United States, people have guns in order to protect themselves, but they are getting hurt more than they are being protected. 
However, if there's nothing to be defended from, if the actual issue calling for self-defence is eliminated, then there should be no need for the normalisation of weapons. Items that are maintained for self-defence can have the perverse effect of creating risks for the users and other members of the community through accidental or deliberate misuse. Normalising pepper spray will create high demands of stock. The largest commercial pepper spray manufacturer that ships worldwide and therefore will inevitably be on our shelves is a close and proud partner of the National Rifle Association in the US, along with multiple other anti-personal spray companies that ship worldwide. Not only will it be normal to have this weapon on our shelves, streets and in our homes, but at the same time, this temporary solution to the dangers on the streets is supporting a racist, anti-feminist, anti-LGBTQ and denies of rape organisation. Our public will be normalising weapons, thus creating a high demand from a company that supports an organisation that opposes the issue the legalisation of pepper spray is meant to be combating. To summarise, pepper spray should not be made legal in South Australia. The legalisation of it will not prevent rape, but will consume the time of our government that could be used to find ways that would work against these large issues. Making pepper spray legal will also normalise it, thus supporting misogynistic organisations and creating an unsafe environment to live in. Thus, should not be legal. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, oh, ta gentlemen, timekeeper, and several adjudicators. As I hope you know, have figured out by now, the topic of tonight's debate is that pepper spray in South Australia should no longer be a prohibited substance. And as my two earlier speakers have well established, we, the negative team, Patently agree with this statement. Wait, affirmative team. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. As third speaker, my job is to sum up my team's case, but not before I rebut and point out some flaws in the opposing team's argument. The negative team's first speaker has argued that pepper spray should be prohibited to avoid it from being used in the wrong hands. But there, in fact, but in fact, there are many more dangerous weapons available in society, such as knives or even guns, that provide much more pain than temporary discomfort, which like pepper spray would. Therefore, some, if someone is really aiming to cause harm, it is life, not likely for them to use pepper spray. And if they were to use pepper spray, it would be a better alternative than to a gun or a knife or even a fist fight. Additionally, there are laws to protect society from assault of all kinds, including if it was done by pepper spray. According to the Criminal Consolidation Act of 1935, anyone can be trialled and convicted for recklessly causing harm to another individual, which includes using pepper spray on them. As a result, it is clear that there is a slim possibility that someone can use pepper spray for the wrong reason, but its benefits outweigh this 
disadvantage of it. The opposing team's first speaker has tried to tell you the dangers of pepper spray and how it does carry risk. They talk about the deaths and other our reactions that people have to it. Firstly, this is a generalisation, as the majority of people do not have these reactions. Furthermore, these ca casualties are such a minuscule number, minuscule number and are not present in countries such as France, who have put fully, pepper spray fully open to pub the public, and they are, had zero deaths from pepper spray in 2017. Therefore, this example from, of the casualties was not reflecting of whether pepper spray should be prohibited or not, but instead reflects that the true problem is the police system. Additionally, if pepper spray was legalised, people would be aware of its potential risk when purchasing it, and if a person suffered from these allergies or difficulties from breathing, they would know not to go near the substance. Furthermore, a report by the advertiser's legal rights reporter Samantha Goodwin states that the shock of being ex the shock of the exposure can generate considerable panic as opposed to the actual symptoms. This shows that pepper spray itself is not the damage, but instead people overreaction to the previous perceptions. The negative team's first speaker spoke of the dangers of everyone acquiring pepper spray. We believe this is not a valid reason to prohibit the substance because there would be other ways to tackle this issue. Although we do not say it, the government could put in place a monitoring system where the only way you could obtain pepper spray is if you had a valid reason to, and if you misused it, there would be appropriate consequences for that. The negative team's first speaker has tried to tell you that pepper spray is much too strong and causes too damaging effects. We would like to point out that pepper spray's point is to put off the attacker, and if it was too weak, it wouldn't be effective. Our second speaker pointed out there is out an alternative where there is no alternative where pepper spray, or pepper spray is the, an alternative where pepper pointed out an alternative to this where pepper spray is the most effective for its intended purpose. The negative teams second speaker has tried to tell you that by legalising pepper spray we are just fighting violence with violence but we cannot take criminals out of society so we may as well have the ability to protect ourselves and pepper spray is a great way of doing so. The second speaker also stated that our second speaker said there were, uh, that only women and the elderly were on reasonable grounds. This is false because our second speaker simply used statistics and personal incidents to prove that pepper spray should be monitored rather than prohibited. Now I will summarise my team's case. Our first speaker, Matilda, opened this debate with a definition, then her initial point, that was that Australians have the lawful right to self-defence, yet pepper spray being prohibited has consequently prohibited South Australians from the capability to protect themselves. She also spoke of how pepper spray is indubitably the greatest option because it cannot, not only does it quickly disarm the attacker with a non lethal inflammation, um, it attack, disarms an attacker with a non lethal inflammation of the eyes and throat. Then our second speaker, Stella, added that it is essential that pepper spray should no longer be prohibited within South Australia, but it instead monitored like it is in Western Australia. She later articulated that, she later articulated by having a citizen obtain pe pepper spray, it gives the citizen a sense of security as they have the option to protect themselves if they are ever vulnerable. So Madam Chairman, Timekeeper, ladies, gentlemen, and all you adjudicators, my team has stood before you and completed a very conveyed a very compelling case on why pepper spray should no longer be prohibited in South Australia because of its many benefits and by allowing it we will not impair public safety but advance it. If Australia truly wants to abide by the UN's na na Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it seems we are currently breaching Article 3. Everybody has the right to life, liberty and security of person. Thus, should we, we, thus, 
Shouldn't we have it as a not premeditated substance? Thank you. <laughs> upon the third negative speaker, Abby Lyle. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Madam Chairman and timekeepers. This evening, my team has covered all the vital reasons why pepper spray should, pepper spray should still be prohibited substance in South Australia. Before I cover and summarise those points, I would like to point out some obvious flaws in the opposition's case. When the first affirmative, affirmative speaker states that many defenceless victims, such as women, being subjected to rape or robbery, Pepper Spray could have made sure these crimes would never have happened. Unfortunately, what the opposition's first speaker didn't take into account was her definition. In her def definition, she states that Pepper Spray will be available to the general public. Yet in her speech, she majorly talked about how women will use it for protection. Even though there is a positive side to this point, when she states the general public, this means anyone. That means criminals. As my first speaker stated, once pepper spray gets into the wrong hands, it can be used in the wrong way and cause detrimental injuries, making these positives unfortunately be outweighed by the negatives. The second speaker also went on to talk about how women and the elderly would feel more at ease and safer with pepper spray. Even though this may be true again, they haven't realised that in their definition they stated general public. Again, my first speaker already talked about how this can cause chaos and let pepper spray be available to the wrong people. The second speaker also stated that pepper spray doesn't have to be available for everyone, again contradicting the words they used in their definition of general public. I've already talked about this enough tonight. So, general public can mean everyone and anyone. This just isn't a good idea. The first speaker also stated that the irritation only lasts around 20 to 90 minutes. This, unfortunately, is not entirely, entirely true. This point is a clear generalisation and it is only talking about what the substance is meant to do or is written on the back of the bottle. But as my first speaker stated clearly, the reaction to the chemicals in pepper spray changes for each person and can end up being deadly. For some, the reaction might only be for 20 to 90 minutes, but for others, it can shut down the lungs, cause permanent disabilities and, in some cases, death. Unfortunately, this 20 to 90 minute irritation just it doesn't apply to everyone. The first speaker has tried to tell you that pepper spray would be, an ideal, uh, would be ideal in self-defence situations. However, it is not suitable for stopping a violent attack and not ideal in those type of panicky situations. In the very tiny chance when you would need to defend yourself in South Australia, pepper spray isn't the only option. Using your surroundings or whatever you have with you also works. Everyday items such as keys, nail files, hairspray and deodorant can also be a substantial self-defence device. The second speaker has tried to tell you that women would feel more at ease with pepper spray and therefore need it as a defence mechanism. However, this puts the debate on how women could be protected when it's not about that. We are making it seem like it's the women who have the responsibility to defend themselves. But it is about the, um, sorry, it is about the perpetrator who enforced the crime and lessening the crime rates. The third speaker also went on to state that there are other dangerous weapons that can be used to cause harm, such as knives and gu guns. But why do we need to add to that long list of harmful weapons? Shouldn't, as a nation, we be attempting to lower crime stats and taking away these dangerous weapons? 
The third speaker also stated that the amount of deaths is such a small number, so it doesn't need to be taken into account. However, isn't one death enough to make a weapon lethal? And means pepper spray has the potential to kill? So, this evening, ladies and gentlemen, we, the Negative team, have put forward a strong case to why the statement that pepper spray in South Australia should no longer be a prohibited substance is false. Is in, is in fact false. Our first speaker tonight discussed how having access to pepper spray can be dangerous for civilians. She discussed examples of dangerous situations where pepper spray fell into the wrong hands and how by having pepper spray in the home, small children can come a possession, possession of it and maybe thinking it's a toy. She also talked about the serious pain and damage that can be caused by pepper spray. She showed examples of the detrimental physical pain it can cause and how it, affects, it can affect different people. Our second speaker discussed how pepper spray is known as a good use of self is known as a good use of self defence, but actually has a high danger and has long lasting effects, and how using it can be frightening and ineffective. She also spoke about how normalising such a dangerous weapon can have detrimental effects on society. An example of this has already occurred in the United States. So, ladies and gentlemen, we, the negative team, believe that the statement that pepper spray in South Australia should no longer be a prohibited substance is false. Thank you.